guys, the day has finally come that I am going to try out Linda Hallberg for the first time. I ended up getting the Spectrum palette and... Wait, it's not called a Spectrum palette, it's called a Spectral palette. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, every time I see this palette, I think of Spectrum. But today we are going to be trying out the Spectral palette. This is what it looks like. I already showed you. I know, I'm so sorry, but... This packaging is so stunning and so breathtaking and I wasn't expecting it to be as pretty as it is when I saw it in real life because in the pictures it looked nice and all but when you have it in front of you it is just so pretty. So if you have not already seen this palette this is what the palette looks like. So it's kind of like a bright pastel palette and this is just perfect for spring and summer. I am so excited to dig into this. So if you want to know more information about this palette, I don't really go into depth in my first impression video, so I will leave a link to the website down below. So if you want to know the price of this, if you want to know how many grams are in this, if you want to know more information about this product, whether or not it's cruel to free and all that stuff, I will just leave the website down below so you can go check it out for yourself because otherwise this video is going to be super long. So what I want to do is I want to swatch this palette, not because swatches really mean that much, but I feel like it gives me a better idea of the formulas when I get to dig my fingers into them and like feel the shadows. So let's go ahead and swatch this. So I'm going to swatch it obviously by row, starting with this one and then that one. And then when I am done swatching, I will be right back. Okay, so um, as for the swatches, I wasn't that blown away, especially after seeing her swatch the palette on Instagram. I will see if I can put in the video of her actually swatching it and put it up on the screen. The way that they swatched on her is not the way that they swatched on me, I will tell you that much. So it also feels like there's a couple of different formulas in this palette. This silver is definitely a different formula than the other shimmers. This one is very gritty and you can kind of feel it on your fingers, but when you swatch it, it feels very smooth. But when I put my finger into that shadow, it definitely feels different than the other ones. And I think that these two are definitely going to be the same formula. This is a different kind of formula. And this one is also a different kind of formula, so there appears to be three different kind of shimmer formulas. I'm not really sure exactly how to explain them yet just from swatching them, but I'm excited to try them on the eyes and see how they perform. And the mattes all kind of felt the same, so I'm not sure yet how to feel about this. Uh, I do think that occult, 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 why do I not know what that means? But this shadow right here, um, this one swatch kind of patchy, so I feel like there's a chance that this one might be a little bit hard to blend out But they all seem pretty pigmented, so I'm still really excited to dig into this palette So I've already primed my eyes with my MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre So I'm going to think about this for a little bit, see what I can come up with I kind of want to try to use all of the shadows in this palette on my eyes today So hang on tight and I'll be right back Okay, so I have a plan, you're just gonna have to follow along, and first off I'm gonna go into Phantom and I'm going to put that in the first half of my crease. And there's a little bit of kick up in the pan here, not too much. So I'm just going to start by packing this on now. And if you guys want to see a comparison with these to the Creepy Cute palette, I will do some swatches at the end of the video just so you can see what they look like next to each other. So far it's looking nice and pigmented, easy to build up, easy to blend out. Alright, so far so good. Next up I'm going to dip into Eerie, which is the lightest of the purple shades, and I'm going to put that in the outer part of my crease. Still using that same brush. And I'm trying to be really careful with where these two colors meet, just because I don't want the transition between the two to get muddy, so I'm not really going to be blending them into each other, I'm just going to pat this on top, just very gently. And the shadows feel extremely soft. I want to say that these kind of feel a little bit similar to the Vizier shadows that I have. Just in like the texture and how they feel on the eyes, they just feel really, really soft. 
So far, no problems with that shadow either. I want to say that the first two mattes seem to have the same formula, which is good. So I'm next going to go into the shadow that I don't know what means, which is occult. And I feel like I should probably Google that. So let me Google that right now because I need to know what that word means. Supernatural, mystical, or magical beliefs, practices, or phenomena. That's good to know. Okay, so we're going to dip into occult and I'm going to use that to deepen up the outer corners with as well as a little bit into my crease, but not a whole lot, and I'm going to keep it just to the outer part of my eye here. I'm not going to be pulling it any further in than where that uh, kind of minty green is. So far this is looking nice and pigmented. So let's move down to the lower lash line now. I think I want to do eerie so i'm first gonna go in with this and then i'm gonna use the pink to blend that out with so i'm first gonna dip into eerie and i'm only going to put that on the outer half of my lower lash line and i'm also making sure that the outer edges here are now blended out the way that i want them to be i will say that i kind of wish i'd put down some eyeshadow primer on my lower lash line before i went in with the shadow because it's a little hard to build up but I find that to be the case with a lot of pastels, so I'm not really surprised by that. But I wanted to make sure in my first impression that I just didn't do that, but next time I will probably go in with a bit more of my paint pot underneath my eye just before I go in with these shadows. And like I said, I'm going to take Unknown and I'm going to use this shadow right here just to blend out what I already have put down. And this one seemed to have a little bit more kick up than the other shadows. I almost feel like this shadow is removing a little bit of that purple that I first put down. So, like I said, I do regret not going in with a little bit of my eyeshadow primer there first. So I'm going to take a bit more of the purple. Alright, so I'm not super happy with how this is looking out here. Uh, that definitely could just be me. So just keep in mind that this is just a first impression and I will have a review up on this as well as three looks in a couple of days like I usually do. So let's see, what do I want to do on my lid? I think my plan is going to be, I'm first going to go into Abstract, which is the blue shimmer. And I'm going to spray this because I like to always spray my shimmers. And I'm going to be putting that in the middle of my lid here. And already I feel like this is more of a topper shade because it doesn't have a lot of base pigment to it. But it's got some beautiful kind of duochrome glitters. The shadow is so beautiful, but I'm glad I have some shadow already put down in the middle where I'm putting this on top because I don't think this would like cover up any crease color or anything like that. So you definitely couldn't use this to do a fake cut crease or anything. But on top of something else, this is so beautiful. And this is fun for me because I'm not really used to working with topper shades like this. I usually tend to prefer very opaque shimmers. And so when I get something like this, I'm always a little bit like confused because I don't really know how to work with them. So this is going to be fun. I'm excited to play around more with this shadow because this is so pretty. And now I'm wondering what the other shimmers are going to be like. So we're going to find out. Next up, I'm going to dip into Faint, which is the green shadow. And I'm going to put that in the first half here of my lid. I'm going to leave a bit of room in my inner corner though for that silver shadow. And I think the shadow is definitely more opaque than the uh, blue. And that the blue is for sure more of a topper shade, whereas this one is more just your regular shimmer formula. And I'm just mixing these two shadows in together now. And I think that looks really pretty. I like this green a lot. I don't know if I really have a pastel green shimmer. Alright, so these are just working together so beautifully. The only problem I feel like I have is just a little bit right on the outer corner here, but I feel like that could have easily been my own mistake for not blending properly. So for the last shadow on my lid, I'm going to use Illusion, and I'm going to put that in the... Actually, you know what? Let's go in with the other shimmer on the lower lash line first. So I'm going to take Dim, which is this one, and I'm going to put that on the first half of my lower lash line. This is such a beautiful coral shimmer. And I'm just meeting that up with the purples that we have on the lower lash line here. 
All right, so now that I have both of these down, I'm gonna go into Illusion, which was the silver shadow, and I'm going to pop that right in my inner corner. And this shadow definitely seems very glittery, so I'm first gonna try this without spraying it because I just wanna see, because I feel like this might also be more of like a topper kind of shade, and I think it is, but let me try to spray this well just to see what happens. And I know Linda Halberg has a lot of topper kind of shades in her little quads. So like I said before, the toppers are not something that I'm really used to working with. So it's going to take me a little bit to figure out how to best work with these shadows to, you know, get them to be at their full potential. Because right now I don't feel like I'm really doing that. Because I'm just treating them as any other shimmer, you know. And I need to find the best way to really get this to pop. And I feel like I could definitely layer this silver on top of any of the other shimmers in this palette and that would look so pretty but this is already looking pretty but like I said it's definitely very just glittery but that is looking so beautiful I feel like this look is really coming together so I feel like this is about where I want to go with the shadows I am gonna go back in with a bit of that blue first and I'm just gonna put a little bit more on this side and make sure that it's looking even on both sides I'm also taking a bit more of that dark Purple, and I'm just gonna bring back a little bit more of that out here because I felt like it kind of went away and I'm also bringing it down to my lower lash line a bit because I felt like that light purple just sort of disappeared a little bit and I'm not completely happy with how the outer corners are looking so I'm gonna work on this for a little bit and then I will be back and we can finish up the rest of the eyes. Alright, so I think I'm a little bit happier with the blends everywhere now, so I think I want to put something in my waterline, and I'm going to go with Crybaby by Colourpop, so I'm going to put this in, I'm going to put on some liner mascara, and then I'll be right back, and we can talk a little bit more about this palette and how I feel about it as my first impression, and I also want to do some comparisons with the Creepy Cute palette, so we will do that when I come back. Okay, so the eye look is all done, and I think this came out really cute. I am really happy with this. I think this is like so spring and so summery and so cute. So speaking of cute though, I, what I want to do next is I want to show you the Creepy Cute palette next to the Spectral palette. So here is what both of the palettes look like, and the shadows that I would like to swatch is so hard to find a way to hold both of these up, but here we go. So I think the only ones that are really going to be similar are going to be these two, um, I will swatch the purple next to the other purple as well as, I guess I will swatch... See, there really aren't any other comparisons because the coral is a matte in this one and it's a shimmer here. And then same with the blue, the blue is a matte here and a shimmer in this palette. So there really aren't that many comparisons, but I will swatch for you this one, this one, this one, and this one. Just so you can kind of see what they look like. So just some quick swatches here. I know they're not going to be the best because they're so far down on my arm, but these shadows apply so beautifully and they are some of the best pastels that I've ever tried. And these swatches are not doing these shadows any justice at all, so I'm going to build them up just a little bit. So as you can see, they really are not similar at all. I feel like the shadows in the Spectral palette are just brighter and more intense. And these ones in the Creepy Cute palette are like more on the pastel -y side. So yeah, if you were wondering if you need the Linda Hallberg palette, I would definitely say that if you are looking for these kind of shadows and you already have the Creepy Cute palette, you're not going to be getting any dupes at all because these are very, very different. So as for my first impression on this palette, I just dug my finger into the silver. That is not ideal. As for my first impression on this palette though, I want to say that I like the palette a lot, but I feel like I don't really understand it that much yet. So I need I need more time to play with the different shimmer formulas to really figure out how to get them to perform at their best because the way I did it now, yes, it looks good, but I feel like there are so many things that I could do with these given that they are toppers and they are a little bit more on the sheer side, especially that blue, the blue is so pretty. I feel like I could layer that on top of so many of the shadows in this palette and it would really make them pop. So I'm gonna have to play around more with this, but I really, really do like it as a first impression and I don't really have anything bad to say about this palette. The only thing I wanna say is that just make sure that you put all of these shadows on top of something that has not been set because pastels just perform better that way. It's not at all a bad thing, it's just a fact. So, you know, just something to keep in mind that you definitely want to, you could also put these on a white base. Now, personally, I don't really like to work on a white base, so that is why I'm not doing that. So please don't come for me in the comments like a lot of you always do when I don't use a white base because I don't like using a white base. So that is going to, I guess, sum up this video. So first impression wise, I think this is a great palette. I think it is 
a stunning design. I think the color story is beautiful. Um, the only thing I was disappointed by was the swatches because mine does not swatch the way that hers does. But you know what? Of course they have to make them look as pretty as they can for Instagram and to be able to sell the palette they need to make sure that these swatches are looking good. So, But they perform beautifully on the eyes and that's really all that matters. So that's going to sum up this video. I will see you all for my 3 looks 1 palette hopefully. So if you are not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you did and became part of my family. And yeah, that's going to be the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye.